and you've been driving a car most of the trip. Uh, would you tell us exactly how you set up camp in the evenings and during the midday also? Well, the first we do is set up the tarp. That's the main thing. And then we start setting up cots and bedrolls. But at dinner, we don't, we don't roll out the bedrolls because they don't uh, intend to go to sleep. They may rest. Uh -huh. Now, you and, uh, you and Bob Houston, of course, are riding along in cars. And how far ahead or with a group do you stay? Oh, uh, sometimes 10 miles, sometimes 13, sometimes 5. It depends on what Donnie says. And what do you do about preparing food? Oh, we start about 45 minutes before time to eat to start that. Uh, and what are you cooking it on? We're cooking on butane stove. 
Now, would you describe the campsite as it's set up now? Just uh, right now, we're uh, approximately one mile west of Big Lake. And would you describe how the campsite looks? Uh, it's windy, and that's one thing. And it uh, tarp is on the right side of the trailer, and the cars on both sides keep the wind down a little bit. And where are the cots? They're all under the tarp. We got the town and the mayor and the the mayor and the <laughs> chamber of commerce was waiting for us with a fire truck and the key to the city. They gave us a big parade downtown on the fire truck and then the best restaurant for anything we wanted to eat. How do you feel? Well, I feel fine personally. My legs hadn't hurt me, but a few of the boys had sores and we put uh, some rub and stuff on them and they're all feeling great now. How often do the parents come out, or have they come out very often? So far, they've been out every night, and uh, we really do appreciate bringing some good home cooking. <laughs> as far as I know, we're right on schedule, and we're going to continue, so everybody is in uh, a good humor. They're all feeling good now, especially since the uh, reception we received in uh, Big Lake today. That really gave them a big, uh, big boost in morale. Also. And you plan to break 100 miles early tomorrow, or, or by tomorrow anyway? It'll be tomorrow morning around 10 o'clock. We should break 100 miles. Oh. Last night's bass. <laughs> um, last night's bass was in uh, alongside the road about seven miles from uh, Big Lake. And uh, the boys took a plunge in uh, a big tank at the bottom of the windmill. We had stuff permission from the, uh, from the owner, the landowner. He says, good idea, go on in. First he said, don't use soap. Then he looked at him and says, go ahead and use soap. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, we use soap. Uh -huh. Well, I notice everybody seems so tan and healthy and happy out there. Uh, Bob Compton's cooking must be really agreeing with them. Oh, yes. He's fine and Compton both are doing an excellent job. Mm -hmm. Now, where do you plan to be this time tomorrow? This time tomorrow, we should be just about in um, Rankin. Mm -hmm. Well, again, good luck. Don, how's everybody feeling? I noticed I was out there by the roadside park while ago, and everyone was very happy. Well, I know this, uh, this was a problem before you left. A lot of people laughed at you, but uh, it looks like you're having the upper hand now. We're having the last laugh, if that's what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly it. Uh, now, have you had any problems with blisters? Several of the boys have developed uh, huge blisters, but most of them are going down now. And what are you doing about them? Are you lancing them? Uh, yes, we're giving them. We're, we're lancing them. We're giving them all first aid, and most most everybody, uh, the blisters are in good shape. They're all going down. They're toughening up. We have no trouble. I notice everyone has a big pair of boots. Yes, uh, one of the boys wears a size seven. He's wearing a size ten now. Boots. I think everyone's going to come back with big feet. <laughs> yes, they're all going to come back with big feet, but. Uh, who cares about big feet? <laughs> right. <coughs> uh, you mean that tastes better than uh, Bob Compton's cooking? Well, his is good, but it lacks some. <laughs> <laughs> well, Don, uh, how is the hike progressing? Well, how far out of town did they meet you? It was just about two blocks. Were you glad to see them? We sure were. Uh, tell me, how, how, do you, how are your legs holding up, huh? Uh huh. Now, where did you get this uh, this rub, this liniment? Uh, some of the parents brought it out. I think Mrs. Houston and uh, Mrs. Compton brought some out for. Uh, how how? That's tremendous. And everybody, of course, the story is really building up back in Big Spring, and uh, we're getting more and more calls into the station every day. Uh, there was some talk about snakes. Could you elaborate a little on that? We've only seen one snake. They <laughs> along the road. They tell us. The only thing more dangerous than a snake is the, the wall drivers out on the highway. Well, how, how big a problem has that been? Have you ever had to dodge any? None. They dodge us. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of scouts looking out for you. <laughs> yeah, I think that's right. No, we haven't had any trouble with traffic. We haven't had any trouble with snakes. No trouble at all. Uh-huh. Uh, who had to drop out? I know one boy gave up and went home. Yes, one of the boys dropped out. He uh, got the feeling quite bad, uh, but all the others are going along. Another boy dropped out, but he's more than a big help in camp. Uh -huh. So actually, we're in good shape. Now, ha actually, how many walkers, how many boys are still on the march? Eight. Eight boys are still going. There are eight. 
And now there is only 11 after one has gone back, and eight of those are marching, and three are helping with camp. Is that it? That's right. The two cooks and one of the boys. Now, would you tell us about last night's bath? Got Jerry Lewis here with me today. He's going to take Bob Huson's place. Good deal. Uh, hold the line now, and he'll talk to you. Okay. Hello? Jerry Lewis. Yes, sir. What do you know? Uh, I called because we reached the 100-mile mark today. We're right outside of, uh, of Rankin right now. Oh, everybody's doing just fine inside their feet and legs. They're getting okay, and, and their legs, well, uh, they're, all, they're getting tough and hard. Uh, we spend the night out, uh, out, let's see, about five miles outside of, uh, 14 miles outside of Rankin. Well, we, we planning to come on in town uh, after a while, about two or three, and go swimming for about an hour. But we're going to walk about 12 more miles today. We'll be on the road five, five days today. Five days today? Yes, sir. How long, how long have you walked today, do you know? Uh, how long? Yes, how well, long? I don't know, we just walked 12 miles, 14 miles today. Just 14 miles? Yes, sir. How far have you walked so far today? So far? Uh, from Big Spring? Uh, no, I mean from uh, where you camped last night to where you are now. Uh, 14. You walked 14 miles? 14 walk? miles. Yes, sir. Well, that's a good day's work already. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, tell everybody we're for them. Uh, I sure will, sir. Okay, Jerry, thank you so much for calling. Okay. Uh, good luck now. Okay, bye. Bye. You're in. A group of eight Sea Scouts from Big Spring, members of ship number 111, are walking from Big Spring to a scout camp in the Davis Mountains, a distance of 250 miles. Since leaving last Sunday, they've walked some 115 miles. Ten scouts left on the march. One stopped walking and returned home. Another one dropped out of the hike but is helping out in camp. Two other scouts are driving two vehicles loaded with camping gear and food. Last Wednesday, when they reached Big Lake, they were given a warm reception, the key to the city, and anything they wanted to eat in Big Lake's finest restaurant. Last night, as they were camping out 10 miles east of McKamey, a passing motorist gave them half a case of tamales. The boys' spirits are high. When asked why they were making the walk, skipper Don Snyder said, because no one else has done it. They hope to reach the camp by next Wednesday. Bob Lewis reporting TSN News from Big Spring. Uh, about Friday. We had a rain Friday. We've had two rains since then. We both, we got rained out pretty bad on them. And, uh, Friday, my cousin Chuck Smith and I, we were, uh, we, uh, slept out in the rain. The rest of them slept in the Volkswagen in the car. And we slept out in the rain. We had a piece of plastic over us. Then the top blew down on top of us, and it kept us pretty dry. And then Saturday, we had another rain, but, uh, we turned all our cots sideways to keep from getting them wet. And, uh, it, it didn't. Uh, it quit before we had to go to sleep, so I didn't bother us much. And uh, Saturday, we pulled into a roadside park. We we wasn't too tired from it, so we went up there and played football. Wednesday morning, we'll be camped at, da at the gate of the Davis Mountains where we'll start our last 12 or 13 miles into the scout ranch. We'll, we'll get into the scout ranch uh, Wednesday about noon. And uh, so far, they're, just about all of us are still walking. There's uh, seven of us walking, Captain Donnie. And uh, we want to thank the food stores, Furs, Home Phillips, Roberts Groceries, Vaughn's Bakery, and the parents and other people that contributed food for us. We got more than enough food right now. And then uh, Sunday morning, uh, we got up and we had a flat tire on the trailer. We had to take it into town and change the tire. And uh, Mr. Henry, Jerry Henry's father, they went to uh, Fort Stockton and they rented us a room for us to clean up in there for church Sunday. We all put on our uniforms and went to church. And the uh, one that I went to, there was four of us went to it, Count Andy Anderson. We went in there and they asked us to stand up and they identified us and everything. And uh, right now we're about 198 miles from Big Spring. And uh, yesterday, Sunday, Joe Clark came out in his plane. He flew over. We weren't sure whether it was him or not. And about uh, an hour later, somebody brought him out to pick up and he talked to us. I wasn't there at the time. Me and Bob copied him down to get gas. And he came out then. Anything else you want to know? Oh, man, that's a tremendous report. Is this the... Hi, this is uh, James Anderson uh, with uh, Sea Scouts here in Belmarais. We arrived in here this morning about uh, a few moments after 9 o'clock. We were met by a representative from the Madera Valley. At, at uh, Belmarais, uh, they uh, took us over to the uh, Toyoville State Park and gave us uh, a pretty nice meal and the boys swim in the big uh, world's largest swimming pool. 
Everybody seems to be in good spirits. We took off and went down to uh, the camp itself, made a short drive down here to look things over and let them know we're coming. And everything seems to be pretty nice. Everybody's expecting us, happy to see us. We don't, uh, I imagine we'll get there about uh, 10, 30, 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. Boys are going in, all dressed in uniform. And uh, we, uh, we're camped out here uh, just outside of Toyoville right now. We're planning on going a little closer to the campsite before we set up for the night. And uh, right now, uh, most of the boys, all except about three of us, are in the uh, over in the swimming pool. We uh, most of the fellows seem to wore all their blisters off, all the blisters they had, and one or two of them still got a blister too. Some of them, uh, I think, got more blisters than they uh, will admit. But they're all working and walking good spirits, good, uh, have a good time. At night, we all seem to be, uh, they uh, get in off the highway and and get over a ball and get out and play football as soon as they get off their hike. So I guess they're making up for tonight. The hiking sea scouts marched victoriously into the Buffalo Trail Scout Camp at 10.30 this morning. Just outside the entrance to the camp, the boys donned their uniforms, fell into step, and walked with heads high into the area. They were applauded by the scouts from other parts of West Texas already there. Our sea scouts left Big Spring 10 days ago on foot. All during the trip, they did their own cooking and housekeeping. And even a dozen boys left. Two were driving cars loaded with camping gear and food. This afternoon, nine walked into the camp. Seven had walked the entire distance. Only one returned home. Two were temporarily sidelined with blisters, but managed to walk the final mile. One boy, Jerry Lewis, is hospitalized, his stomach upset after eating his first meal in the mess hall this evening. They're heroes tonight, and we are here in the Buffalo Trail Scout Camp, the mess hall. And here are the hikers. They tell of their most thrilling experiences during the 250-mile walk. Uh, my name is Deb Clinton. I think the thing that I enjoyed most is when we came in the gate. My mother was standing there and saying, I felt mighty proud was wearing a uniform and saying, all in step and saying, doing her case and saying, I just felt mighty proud with my mother standing there. Uh, my name is Jerry Smith, and what I like is going swimming at Bell Murray. My name is Jerry Clyde, and I think the most exciting thing that happened was the reception of the town. Mm -hmm. Ms. Bob, you sound like the person mm -hmm. she certainly is. Uh, the most concerning thing I thought was when I was standing up waiting for the boys to come marching to the gate and to the, 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 the kids count. It was really thrilling to see the other boys around us stand and take notice up to us. I'm very settled. The most thing I thought was interesting and the thing was uh, uh, us making it inside the gate and coming so far. Jerry Hannah and I think the most exciting point was coming into the uh, gate. Bob Thompson, the most exciting thing has been the whole trip. I'm Skipper Dom Snyder, and I think the most proudest moment is standing outside this mess hall saying that we made it. This might be over, and I think the most exciting part of this trip will be when we get back to Big Spring and tell our friends we made it. My name is Jerry and I think that this trip has been really educating for more of us. And I think that everyone, everyone on this trip has been really thankful that we have made it here today this morning. This two hooper I think will be really educating to tell if we're our families and friends in the future in the past. This is Bob Lewis reporting from the Davis Mountains. Our For What It's Worth department has two words to say about this. Ah, youth. Did you know that nine Sea Scouts walked from Big Spring, Texas to their camp near Fort Davis 250 miles. They walked 250 miles in 10 days. Means they got to average 25 miles a day, and yet their skipper, Don Snyder, says they usually finish their daily hike in the morning. Spent the afternoon playing touch football. Ah, you. Paul Harvey. Good day. Uh, Doug Clinton. Yes. What happened when you walked into camp? Well, there was, uh, most of our parents were standing there, mine was, and a few others were standing there, and, and there was a bunch of boys gathered around watching us come in, and we'd come in doing the cadence and everything, and we'd all in step and everything, we had on our uniform, we'd, we'd just march in, about as proud as we was pretty proud of the unit. 
What's your name? Jerry Cryer. Jerry Cryer, uh, what was your most exciting moment on the trip? Well, I think when we marched in the gate when everybody was looking. And, well, we had quite a few receptions and things in towns, but I think the best thing that could happen to me was walking in the gate. Uh, Bob Compton, you were one of the KPs, one of the house keepers along the trip. What problems did you encounter along the way? Oh, uh, sometimes we didn't have enough food for the boys. I don't know if that was our fault or not. But the uh, problem is just getting, you know, the wind is blowing all the time and getting that tarp up was really a problem sometimes in the high wind. It really wasn't any other problem. You say you were short on food. How did you meet this problem? Oh, I don't know. We're not short on food now. A bunch of people came out from, uh, you know, the big spring, brought all that food out. We got more food now than we left. Uh, Chuck, how are your feet? They're okay. They're okay? Uh, how'd you feel when you walked through that gate? Oh, I felt pretty good. Uh-huh. Uh, what was the biggest reception you got along the way? Say, uh, I guess it was in Big Lake. What happened in, in Fort Stockton? Nothing. How about in Balmeray? Oh, they just bought our dinner and we went swimming in Balmeray Swim Pool. Mm -hmm. uh, are you glad you made this trip? Yes, sir. Bob, you sort of filled us in on reports all along this trip. Uh, it's statewide now. Uh, how do you feel about the fact that you made a 250-mile walk? Does it change your attitude uh, toward scouting, toward exercise, and toward life in general at all? Yes, sir, it did very much. When you get out in the outdoors and you really realize how much trouble it is to really work and to put up the tarp as we did and to cook, you really realize that being a scout is not as simple as some people think it is. Well, I know that's not uh, too, uh, too many scouts have undertaken a 250-mile march. Uh, what was the greatest problem you encountered? Well, I think the greatest problem, as Bob Compton mentioned, was that at times we'd be short of food, but we'd make up because we'd uh, just have to dish out certain amounts and have to just make it sparingly, and sometimes we'd, uh, some of the cooks wouldn't eat, but later we would uh, have other foods that we could eat. Well, how long did you have to ration? Well, you might call it right. Well, <laughs> most of the trip you had to, of course, uh, give, give us just a certain amount of food where you'd have enough for everyone. And I'd say most of the trip until all the parents from Big Spring brought out enough food for us. Now we have more food than when we started out. Mm -hmm. I understand a lot of parents were here this afternoon. Who was here? Well, Dub Clinton's mother, Chuck Smith's mother, Jerry Lewis's mother, uh, Dub Clinton's sister, Donna Clinton, uh, Jerry Cryer's mother and dad. Are they still here? Uh, no, sir. They left all around 3 o'clock. Went home. Burr, how's your blisters? It's fine. Good. Uh, now, did you ride for a couple of hours or so? Uh, I, ro I rode about all the way up here. I, I walked 50 miles or more. You walked 50 miles or more? Well, how did it feel to be with a bunch of guys who were walking 250 miles when you just walked 50? Uh, it, was, it was, you know, left out place, I guess. But working camp's a lot harder than they would think they, it is. Well, I would think it is, too. In fact, to, to prepare a place for these guys, and when they, all they have to do is walk. And when you have to do is to prepare camp for them in the evenings and also cook for them. Uh, what was your greatest thrill on the whole trip? Oh, mostly uh, going into the towns and everything. And all the people greeting us and everything, I guess. But that's the most thing I like. Uh, what happened when it rained? Everybody got wet. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, had they, didn't they try to keep from getting wet? Yeah, they got in the Volkswagen. They got in the Volkswagen? Uh, until it stopped. Uh -huh. Jerry, how old are you? I'm sorry, 16. 16? What uh, grade will you be in next year? Senior. And what other activities, scout activities, have you been involved in besides walking 250 miles? Oh, that's about all lately. <laughs> well, that's a pretty good project at one time. Uh, how'd you feel when you walked through that gate there? I felt pretty happy. I'm glad that I'm in it. Uh, how do you think this will affect you, say, the rest of the summer? Do, will you look back on this trip and remember it? Yes, sir, I will. Surely will. What was the greatest challenge? Was it walking the 250 miles or combating the weather and the sun? Or just what was it? It was walking the 250 miles. Now, did you have any trouble with blisters any time? 
Yes, sir. I had to go to the doctor one day. Uh, where was this? Uh, it was in Big Lake, I think. Uh -huh. Well, no. McKamey. And what did the doctor do? He bandaged my foot up and told me to stay off it one afternoon. And that one afternoon, you walked this until you could, until you had to stop and go to the doctor. And you laid out for half a day and then got back into the march. I got back and marched. <laughs> Mike, as sort of a narrative, would you bring us up to date on the whole trip? Well, I guess I could try. We uh, started out the first few days. A bunch of boys were sore, sick, or, well, not really sick. They were tired of the trip right away. But then the spirits got high as we got, went into Big Lake and got a real welcome there like heroes. And as we went along, everybody got a little better and a little better until finally we were just all ready to go in and nothing could hold us back. What do you say was the peak of the trip? When were you uh, feeling the best and walking the fastest? I believe it was walking the fastest the tent last 10 miles. <laughs> we were really moving then. Yeah. You probably double time a little through that gate, didn't you? Not through the gate we didn't. We did before we got to it. The skipper kept us going pretty good there. <laughs> well, where were you last night? We were 10 miles from the gate here. 10 miles from the, yeah. 10 miles from the gate to the uh, Buffalo Trail Scout Camp. Yeah. And so you got up this morning and you only had 10 miles to go, huh? That's right, but they were long miles. Though. And they were over some pretty rough country. What about this out here? Well, it has its ups and downs. <laughs> <laughs> it does that. Uh, did you see any buffalo? No buffalo, a lot of cattle. Uh -huh. I didn't see any buffalo until I came through the gate. Uh, what did you enjoy most? Well, that's a tough question. I enjoyed the whole trip, really, just in general. Don, you and six other boys have just walked 250 miles. Why did you do it? Well, um, the reason we did it is because it's never been done before. We like to be a different kind of unit in town. Do you think the boys really put out their best? I mean, I think this is a really a, a display of a spirit of a group of boys. I know every one of them did their best. I haven't got a complaint from one member of this whole unit. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud of all, every one of them. Uh, I noticed a couple of shoes look pretty ragged. Did anybody ruin any soles on their shoes? Oh, yes. Uh, several of them. Well, one of them here is walking on barefoot, practically when walking the gate. <laughs> every one of them. Did anybody's feet grow? <laughs> Yes, one of our members, I think I told somebody, um, he wears size seven and a half, he wears size ten now. Now, do you have any other projects like this planned? Not for the next two or three days. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's some mountains around here. Are you going to try to climb some mountains while you're here? Some of the boys already have climbed some mountains, but I'm not going to climb any mountains. <laughs> <laughs> How long are you going to be here? Uh, the next day or two at least before we head back. Okay. And you're not going to walk back? No, we're riding back. <laughs> we came to the gate. My mother was standing there and everything, and I felt my proud was wearing a uniform and everything, was all in step and everything, was doing her case and everything, and I just felt my proud when my mother standing there. Uh, Jerry, we're talking to you from the hospital bed. Uh, what happened? We're like dinner uh, here at uh, Davis Mountains in the mess hall, and uh, I got sick. I don't know what I don't know what it was. You missed that campsite cooking. That's what it was. Yes, sir. I think it was. Anyway, it got me sick. <laughs> Would you tell us how uh, what everyone did this morning just before they arrived here at the camp? Well, we all were uh, camped just about uh, a half a mile, you know, right right on the gate before we came into camp, and we put our uniforms on, and we got in formation. And we marched marched into the camp. Using Katie's camp, and um, when we got here, we had a we, we had I think we had a real good welcome waiting for us. Well, what happened when you walked through the gate? Did anyone applaud? Was anyone on hand? Uh, yes, sir. Our parents were there, and some of the scouts uh, uh, applied applaud when we got into the gate. Are uh, you ready to go back home? Well, I, it's hard to say. I just feel the up here the rest of the rest of them until everybody got ready to go home. Uh -huh. You really developed a... What's that? This hall. Uh, that's when the KPs go to the, the um, dining area to fix their place for their troop. Mm -hmm. Now, you really developed a camaraderie between all the boys, didn't you? I think this is probably the thing that's drawn you closer.
closest together in all your scouting activities. Do you feel this way? Uh, yes, sir, I do. I think this is, has been really, really exciting for me and, and anybody else I know that has been on this trip uh, tonight because it made it very, very educating for everyone, I think. What did you learn the most? Well, uh, I learned the hardships that you have to go through in camping out and many other activities that there are in scouting. You do not realize the, the, uh, the opportunities that you have or hardships that you have until you really get out and see how you are. Mm -hmm. You realize that suddenly it's not uh, necessary to have a lot of comfort to survive. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> well, we got out and we put up our bedrolls and cots every day and slept on them. They wasn't comfortable. And, and we got rain and hail on and everything else. <laughs> It's been bad weather for us about all the way down here. What happened when it hailed and rained? Well, we most of us were asleep, and we have a big, we have a big tarp we sleep underneath. And uh, this tarp, and the wind got up so high that it blew the tarp and ripped it off, and and we most of us had to get up and, and put it back on. And that this took us about all the rest of the night to do this. Uh -huh. And did it ruin any of your food or anything? Well, no, sir, it didn't. It, it maybe a little water got into our kitchen and got something wet, some of our bread and stuff wet, but uh, that didn't really hurt any human damage. The outhouse really held up during the trip then, didn't it? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> we couldn't do without it. Uh, well, Jerry, it's uh, been reported that you played football at the end of the day in roadside parks. Yes, we did. With nothing else to do, we just go and camp and lay down and wasn't tired, so... We went down and to Rankin and bought a football, and ever since then we were playing football every day when we rest. Well, Jerry, it's really been nice talking to you here in the hospital. I'm sorry that we have to carry on our conversation here. I hope you'll be up from there by later tonight or tomorrow anyway, and continue to climbing these mountains. You really have some challenges there, too. Are you going to do any mountain climbing while you're here? Oh, we might go to the needle. That's a, it's a real sharp point rock about, uh, on down the trail about five miles. We might go up there and see how that looks. Well, we're proud of you, Jerry. 